so um, good afternoon everyone so what i'm going to talk about today is the continuation of the previous talk actually so i will talk about unique collider signatures of a left right symmetric model with uh, minimal dark matter this is an ongoing work <clears throat> so um, my presentation outline is uh, i'll just briefly talk about the motivation and model because arn has already described them and after that i will talk about production of quintuplet at colliders then i will talk about the collider signatures and after that i will conclude so uh, first to talk about briefly about the motivations we all know that there is a scalar boson at 125 gev but it doesn't necessarily solve all the issues that's why we have gathered here the issues like non zero neutrino mass dark matter origin of matter antimatter symmetry etc so the left right symmetric model is one of the beyond standard model theories that gives you these solutions so it's so like maximum parity violation and it gives naturally light neutrino mass stable tv scale dark matter and if the su2r cross u1 breaks at tv scale it gives you interesting collider signatures <coughs> now in some of those models the unique collider signatures like 5 to 8 leptons or sometimes 2 to 4 same sign leptons plus jets uh, can be observed and these channels are interesting and unique in the sense that these are mostly background free so uh, next i'll talk about the model very briefly <clears throat> so this model is su3c cross su2l cross su2r cross u1 and the particle content as described before is uh, chiral fermions the standard bi doublet hr where the neutral component gets the wave vr then the <clears throat> scalar bi doublet phi uh, where uh, phi1 and phi2 gets wave v1 and v2 which is required to break the left right symmetry of the model and also we, what we have considered a su2r vector like fermion quintuplet to accommodate the dark matter candidate so here is the representation of the quintuplet chi where the <coughs> the chi the neutral component will serve as the dark matter and for our uh, work we have chosen b minus l to be uh, equals to 4 and also, <clears throat> so uh, this is a, mostly about the model next uh, i would like to show you the lagrangian uh, that i have considered here so here the quintuplet fermions being charged under su2r and u1b minus l they can couple to photons as well as su2r gauge bosons so if you look at the lagrangian here the first time is the coupling of uh, the quintuplet with the standard model z the next one is the its coupling with the photon the next one is with br um, and then the last one is with the double prime or w r so we have <coughs> we we have taken this lagrangian and so um, now we have this quintuplet the component of this quintuplet are mass degenerate at three level uh, but we have radiative correction to remove the degeneracy as discussed before and this mass difference increased as we increase the masses as uh, it has been shown in the previous talk so from the heavy for if so if we go to the heavier mass the heavy and the heavier mass decays to the next heavier masses then we can have energetic leptons via the off shell decays of w prime so if i go back to the previous slide here <clears throat> so we can consider if we produce chi 4 plus 4 minus then it can go through a decay chain uh, both of them and then uh, we can get leptons in between but if we take the masses of these particles to be much higher we have to pay price for the lower cross section so um, we have to we, we have considered something that uh, the photon photon fusion cross section which will help to boost up the cross section that i will show you later so next on production and of <coughs> production of quintuplets at colliders so here as you can see the quintuplets um, has been uh, can be produced by s channel diagrams on your left and the right and uh, also by photon photon fusion which is t or u channel diagram so <coughs> and in the in this manner um, all combinations of chi q plus chi q minus or the chi q plus 1 plus and chi q minus can be produced so for all q equals to 4 3 2 1 and 0 now why we want to consider this uh, photon photon fusion process apart from this drelian processes are <clears throat> the photon density what happened before is photon density being significantly smaller 
then the quark and gluon densities photon fusion contribution to the pair production processes of charged fermion was neglected but here the photon coupling to a pair of charged fermion being proportional to the charge itself the cross sections are enhanced by q to the power 4 so when you have q equals to 4 3 or 2 this is a significant enhancement in the cross section also photon fusion being a t or u channel process it falls slowly with the center of mass energy compared to the s channel Rayleighian processes so uh, that's why we have considered the importance of this photon photon fusion to study the collider phenomenology of this model and for larger masses like doubly triply and quadruply charged fermions photon fusion process can be significant compared to the conventional dark Rayleighian production and that I have shown here so this is a plot for the cross section of PP goes to 4 plus 4 minus in pico burn and how it varies with its mass so in the <coughs> red curve shows you the the Draylian cross section and the black curve shows you the uh, photon uh, photon fusion contribution so as you can see at a mass around 800 GeV the uh, photon fusion contribution takes over the Draylian process so when we uh, started uh, started um, studying the phenomenology we have taken both the contributions in the cross section and uh, that started giving us uh, significant results so here is a list of parameters and constant that we have used uh, so uh, to mention we have taken vr to be 13 dv and uh, we have uh, calculated the w prime or z prime masses to be 6 and 7.15 dv maintaining the ratio of 1.2 and we started working with this mass spectrum where the dark matter mass is 400 GeV and the heaviest quintuplet has a 495 GeV. So what's to um, look for here is uh, if you look at the mass difference, this is not much. So it's, it starts from 10 GeV and if you look at the masses of the last two of them, it's uh, somewhere around uh, 37 GeV. So <clears throat> it's really very hard to get energetic leptons out of this mass spectrum. Okay, so here is a list of the cross section of different processes that we have calculated for the calculation. I think I can skip that. Okay, next on uh, branching ratios. So these quintuplets can uh, decay via the optional W prime to leptons and also the quarks. It cannot decay to T and B because the mass difference is very uh, is small. Uh, so with these branching ratios and cross sections in our hand we calculated the sigma times br effectively so here's an example how to how we have calculated it suppose we want uh, three same sign leptons and we have produced four plus four minus so then four plus can decay into three then it can decay into two and one and zero so on and we want three of them to be lepton and the five of them to be uh, quark so that's how I, we calculate. So next we <coughs> produce three plus three minus and so on. All the contributions has been added. So sigma times BR for three same sign lepton channel, we got to be 13.643 femtoburn, which is a quite moderate number. Uh, okay, so next on collider signatures. So these are the interesting collider signatures that we are looking for. And here you have the ma uh, Oh, I'm sorry, this should be uh, the channel. Uh, so we have the four same sign lepton, three same sign lepton, two same sign lepton uh, cross section times BR. So as we require more number of leptons, the, uh, you can see the cross section time BR is decreasing. Uh, but the advantage is again, the multi lepton channels with more leptons have smaller cross section, but they are practically background free. So if even if you have a smaller cross section, if you are able to produce very small number of events that can pass your selections, you can have a good result. So similarly, we can have this five lepton, six lepton, seven or eight lepton uh, uh, channels. Okay, so here is a list of backgrounds that we have to consider for this um, work. And as you can see, um, mostly two same sign lepton channels will uh, experience some backgrounds, but the three same sign leptons channel will be, uh, lepton channel will be practically background free, and similarly the other leptonic channels. And an important thing to note here is the background contributions will be very small if we require a BZ veto or a Z veto, because 
as the, uh, the signals are coming from the off-shell decays of W prime, these will not affect the signal uh, very much. So this is something we are looking for. So we have implemented the model in Fein rules and generated events in order to study them. And we also took some references from ATLAS and also from CMS. Uh, where the same sign left two same sign leptons are studied, or two or three leptons uh, has been studied, and we were comparing our plots um, with these uh, leptons, basic lepton uh, PT selection and eta selections, and this is what we got for uh, as the distribution in two same sign lepton channels. So in the first plot, these are the momentum uh, PT distribution plots for lepton one and lepton two. So if a basic uh, lepton card has been put here, you can see you have enough number of events to deal with. So this has been normalized at 30 femtoburn inverse, and also the corresponding cross-section has been considered. So uh, you have still have some events, um, many events to deal with here. And similarly here, you have the, it's a missing energy distribution. So if you want a, a, a missing ET card around 300 or 400, even though you have a lot of events to deal with. So two SCM sign lepton channels can show um, some uh, interesting uh, results. Next, when we moved on to three same sign lepton channels, and we tried to plot the PT distribution in order to get significant number of events, we have to move to 300 femtoburn inverse. Because again, as I have shown here, the cross section, if you move from two same sign lepton to three same sign lepton, it decreased a lot. So that's why we needed high luminosity here. But again, um, we need to generate more events uh, to study all these plots. And you can see even survives even if a strong selection is imposed on this uh, momentum. So similarly, we have studied four same sign lepton channels, but I have not shown it here because it requires more than 1,000 femtoburn inverse uh, luminosity to give you some e such events. So uh, the next to conclude, um, the LAC searches for multi-lepton channels should be a priority in the future as a possible new window to uh, new physics, not only for this left-right symmetric models, but also for models where you have vector-like leptons or supersymmetry. So, and also due to the smallness of this cross-section times branching ratio in multi-lepton channels, one needs higher luminosities to observe and access. But again, I want to emphasize the fact that these channels will be practically background-free. So, uh, and to um, what's our current estimate is to see moderate number of events. We need around 300 femtoburn inverse luminosity and uh, more than 1,000 femtoburn inverse luminosity for three same sign lepton and four same sign lepton channels. And uh, another important fact I would like to uh, mention that more precise collider studies have to be performed yet because efficiencies are needed to be fixed. As I learned it here, that the detection efficiencies of ATLAS and CMS has been improved a lot for leptons and jets. And what we have done here with the old efficiencies. So we are um, expecting to boost uh, that if, I, if we use the new detection eff efficiencies, the, our results will get boosted. So overall, there might be a glimpse of light of beyond standard model physics in multi-lepton channels. Talk. So, time for questions and comments. Um, so, uh, so, then opposite should be also true like dark matter can annihilate and produce photon, right? So, here the photon photon is um, so uh, it's producing the, all the components, right? Okay. So, I'm just asking that dark matter if it is. Uh, can annihilate to photon, photon, then it should be constrained from the like Fermilet data. Yeah, it should. Yeah. Be. yeah. So um, I just want to make comment that you can check on that. Yeah, the, there, is, there will be several constraints that we needed to check in, or, in order to uh, predict the sigma times branching ratio, what we are seeing effectively. But we, yes. Yeah. So there are S channel and T channel. No, but. No, yeah. he is saying that it can annihilate. Yeah. I'm talking about annihilation. So, uh, it is, looks like it is possible. So, any other questions or comments?
If not, let us thank Nilanjana once again.